folks, so what I got here is another uh, Capcom 1942 uh, PCB. Uh, this is something I got on eBay for, well, quite cheap if I'm uh, totally honest. I think it was like 40 euros and then uh, very minimal shipping. But anyway, it was sold to me by the guy who said it had uh, issues because there was a sticker that says issues on it. and. Uh, uh, you didn't test it or anything like that and uh, sold it to me like that so um, well, quite a bargain if I'm honest and it's a nice compliment to my other uh, PCB because I sort of like to have two uh, one running in the cab and one spare in case that one craps out and I can just replace it with a working one and work on the other one but this one had issues as it says so I want to see what those issues were um, and, uh, and and fix them hopefully. So let's uh, let's have a look. I'm just gonna switch the PCB, the monitor on. Uh, there you go. A little bit more juice than that. Get to a nice five volt. And uh, yeah, okay. So the PCB is booting. In fairness, I knew that it was booting. He said it was booting. Um, very bright. Uh, sorry gonna get this light away for a second so I don't see any issues well the monitor here um, is causing that thing but uh, I need to recap that at some point maybe I should do that next in a video or something like that but anyway uh, so the game is running There's no sound issues I don't see any sprite or graphic issues it's not rebooting oh, okay there you go well, <laughs> I'm not doing anything, this is my two hands. Uh, the game is just firing straight away. So it's like somebody's pressing button one uh, all the time. And uh, I think I can guess what the issue is. Uh, so yeah, it's like somebody's pressing the button one. So it's either uh, being shorted or, 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 well, that's the only reason I could see really if it's being shorted. Uh, but there's a couple of things that could short it either the chip itself that's dealing with the input or There's usually a, a, a pull-up resistor or sometimes a cap uh, So we're gonna have a look at the schematics maybe and, and see what's going on here um, Let me turn down this uh, guy and uh, let me get the uh, schematics dealing with that part of the circuit There you go. So I have the one page dealing with those inputs. So here with the uh, edge connector for a player one and a player two and these are both going to these uh, these are not buffers are they yeah they are buffers yeah three se three six seven let me get um let me get the uh, TTL book in a minute but we're just gonna have a quick look uh, it's coming uh, player one loop and fire arc if that's the fire button so the thing is firing all the time and it's coming into pin two of this three uh, six seven, and there's a pull-up resistor here. So in this case, you can see all these uh, connections here. It's not a separate resistor; it's a resistor, um, um, whatever array bank here you know, thing. Uh, these guys, essentially, I assume it's one of these uh, chips here. Uh, we'll know exactly which one, but you, you can see you have the chip and. Uh, resistor it says 2.2 kilo ohms here in this case and 2.2 and 4.7 so there's three of these chips and uh, three resistor arrays which is consistent with the uh, schematics here so there you go yeah 2.2 2.2 and actually 2.2 here uh, on the board it's a 4.7 interesting never mind this is the one that is uh, uh, is causing our issues so we're gonna look in that area of the circuit first before we go to uh, to uh, the, 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 some data bus here so we have the data bus here going into uh, so okay, this is coming from uh, probably our data bus is from the CPU because it's page one usually it's the CPU page uh, going into something else going into again one okay this our part of our data bus uh, coming from uh, the CPU going back into the CPU bus, um, which makes sense. So let me just make check. We got pin two, which is our input, and pin three, 
which is uh, the output. So ideally we should have that pin uh, low all the time and, uh, and high when we press the button. So let me fire the scope and uh, see what we are getting. Okay, there you go. So you can see uh, this pin two here uh, of uh, this chip here. Uh, by the way, I should have said before, this is the chip we're looking at. So here, let me just focus. This is uh, A4 and A4. This is uh, four and no, it says A, sorry, and four is here. So this is the ship we're looking at. I'm just gonna ground this properly. And there you go. Um, so pin two is our input. It's coming straight from our uh, edge connector. I think this is this guy here. And we should have a, a straight line from here to here. I could double check with my multimeter, in fact. There you go this second pin doesn't matter um, so I'm gonna take a reading from here but here so it's low and um, it's low and when we press the button it should become high and nothing here is happening if we check with the uh, button 2 here which is on pin 6 uh, pin 6 I'm just gonna show you again our uh, the loop button which is where your plane going over but it's button 2 it goes on pin 6 and out goes on pin 7. Uh, if we look at pin 6, when we press the button, well, it's high all the time. We press the button, it goes low. So that's, uh, in this case here, it's low all the time and it just, nothing happens really. When you press the button, it just goes even lower. So I'd say we have a short in this chip. Well, could be a number of things. In fact, it could be there's a short in the pull-up resistor. Although it doesn't quite make sense. If it was a short, it would be shorted to high all the time. And we wouldn't be able to fire. So I said we were short to ground, which is this pin, which we can uh, check very quickly. I shouldn't do that with the power on. But there you go. Um, pin 6. There you go. No short. Pin 2 very we short. Pin 6. No short. Pin two very short. Um, interestingly, let me take this thing off. Interestingly, all these three ships are socketed. These are all our buffers, X buffers, from the for the input. Uh, they were all socketed, and these are all Fujitsu chips. Now, the interesting thing about those Fujitsu ship chips was that when they fail, they sort of fail in batches. And these are all uh, 376, so you know what? They're socketed already. I'm gonna change all three. I'm gonna, not even gonna bother. Uh, well, I know this one is bad, and I'm gonna check the other ones. I'm just gonna change all three, because it's a matter of time until uh, these fail. In fact, I should probably check. There you go, there's one here, one here, one here, one here. There's a few, oh God, in this, board is littered with <laughs> Fujitsu chips. There's more here, 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 here. No, not this one, here, here. Um, yeah, there's a good few Fujitsu chips. There's more here and here. I'm just gonna change the ones that fail, that, uh, fail I suppose. So I'll change these for the purpose of this video, but uh, I will probably change these guys as well because uh, I'm just asking for trouble leaving. Once one failed, the other ones would fail fairly quickly afterwards. These were all from the same batch and it's it's an issue with just contact corroding and delaminating inside. Um, and uh, typically, typically when one of certain type fails, the other one would fail because they're from the same batch and it's just due to manufacturing uh, and poor manufacturing. So it's very likely that these guys will fail at some point. Anyway, these are socketed. I'm not going to take a chance and, uh, and replace them. I have this tool, which I never use. I usually use uh, just a screwdriver. But uh, these tools are very handy. And uh, if you're unsure about unsocketing, uh, removing chips from sockets, or if you don't want to scrape or risk scraping the, the thing underneath, you can use one of those. It just got those two tabs. You just uh, uh, run them underneath and just lift straight up. Uh, not like that, like I did, but do you know what? Interestingly, 
we're going to check something. Uh, is it shorted here? When you point K, in which case it could be the the uh, uh, resistor. I didn't see any capacitor. Actually, the resistor wouldn't make sense. So I bet you that's not shorted here. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. So I'd say it's shorted inside this chip. This is shorted to ground in internally. So we're going to replace this chip, and we're going to replace actually all three chips because these are all Fujitsu. Uh, 37 uh, 367 um, So we're gonna replace all three of them luckily. I have a few uh, so let's do that and test again So there you go, we got our uh, three chips here, uh, three buffers replace, uh, three, six, seven uh, X buffers. If you can see here, there's a little uh, uh, color dot, it's an orange little color dot. It's actually coming, this chip is coming from my other 1942 PCB. There was a, um, I sort of identify all the chips that were connected to the, the uh, sound circuit and uh, I went ahead and just marked them, or chips that could affect the sound circuits. I went ahead and marked them. I think this is coming from the upper part or here, this part of the circuit. Um, anyway, and uh, and uh, I marked them to be just tested and replaced uh, if needed be. This one tested fine. There was no errors with it. Yeah, you've probably seen the repair video at this stage, but. Uh, so I kept it and uh, I just yeah, I like the idea of reusing you were using it for this board It wasn't intentional. I just pulled it out of my uh, my box of, uh, of uh, ICs here. So there you go all three replaced. Let's just uh, Let's just test this guy it's Booting up uh, just fine As before Cred is working Start button is working. Right, left, up, down. The second button is working, so I'm assuming it's not shooting it. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's not shooting automatically, so that was a good indication that the uh, the chip uh, was working as expected. And indeed, now we have a working board. So I'm not just gonna keep playing. But there you go, folks. That's a it's a very uh, Quick and easy fix uh, for a change. Mind you, I've had a few uh, quick and easy fix. Every, to be honest, every fix I have, I feel like I'm, I'm lucky. Um, I, I don't know why, but I feel like every fix is a lucky fix. Uh, um, if somebody fixes BCBs, let me know if that's a feeling you share. I feel like a, a fraud every time I fix one of these, but uh, I suppose the more I learn, the more I realize I didn't know that in the previous fix or whatever. Um, it's, yeah, it's a funny, funny feeling of sorts anyway folks um this is it by the way this is something i wanted to talk about as well because I, i've been getting a few um, emails from people who were wondering whether i could fix their broken game or broken board <coughs> uh for you know if, if and they offer to pay me for the service but uh, it's first it's not a service i can offer uh, and also it's not a, a service I would have time for really I, I'm just doing this whenever I can and uh, I've said that to people and they were like well you know do my board whenever you can but unfortunately it's not a service I want to offer either because um, taking money for something like that would sort of raise expectations that um, I, I'm able to fix the board and with the time, you know, the, your the, a video like that would be just one we can, but sometimes they can take weeks to fix, um, and that's time I would have to charge. 
you know, essentially um, I would have to charge and sometimes I would have to charge time for just looking at the board and, and figuring out that I can't fix it and that's not something I want to get into and dealing with customer service and all that kind of stuff. So the answer is, can you fix my board? Uh, the answer is no, I can't. I'm not an expert at this, I'm learning and I don't like fixing my own boards and messing them up every now and then and spending money to replace parts. But when it comes to offering a professional service, it's not something I can do. There's plenty of people who do that. If you go to jamarcade.net, there's a few people who might be able to help you there. If you go to Clav or if you go to UKVAX, there's actually a, a, um, guys that do that for a living. Mark Higgsman does a lot of uh, um, Sega awards, for instance. So, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, I, it's not a service I offer. I have repaired boards for friends and people that... I've talked to um, uh, for a while and people that I've met online, that kind of stuff. Uh, usually what happens is they offer me, you know, a, a, a sacrificial board uh, or they have two boards and I get one working and send it back to them and then I can keep the other one, that kind of stuff. It's not a practice I would encourage either, again, because it just raises expectations. So my short answer is, can I fix your board? No. Anyway, I've rambled enough, folks. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter, and uh, there's a, a Discord channel if you want to chat, and uh, just get, you know, some help as well on fixing your own stuff, and, uh, and there's a Patreon page if you want to help the channel folks thank you for watching and i'll see you next time